Hey everyone, despite having the third largest defense budget in the world, India procures 60% of its weapons from foreign markets. It obviously increases the fiscal deficit of the country. And more importantly, India has to depend upon other nations for critical technologies and defense equipment. Hence, Indian government has taken a very important step to reduce the foreign dependency for defense equipment. Indian government has started giving preference to local indigenous defense manufacturer to reduce reliance on other nations. It has resulted in a big boom in Indian defense sector which is still in a very nascent stage. So in this video we will discuss the fundamentals of one company that is the only Indian company having specialization in aircraft manufacturing and providing its maintenance and related services with more than 70 years of experience in the sector. It manufactures aircrafts like Tejas and Sukhoi. Well, we are talking about none other than Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. Over the last couple of years, since government focus on indigenous manufacturing in defense sector, there's a sharp jump in Hindustan Aeronautics share price. Now the question is, just like its aircraft, can HL share continue to fly high in the sky? What does future behold for this company? Well, we'll figure out in this video. As usual, we'll cover the company profile, leadership, future growth prospect, key risk, and financials along with valuation. But before we begin, let me clarify that this video is only for educational purpose. And if you want to learn more about every aspect of money management and investment, you can explore my online course. All right, let's get started. The history of Hindustan Aeronautics dates back to 1940 when it was known as Hindustan Aircraft Limited that would manufacture the aircraft in India. Later, Indian government became a major shareholder in the company and in 1951, Hindustan Aircraft Limited was placed under the administrative control of Ministry of Defence, Government of India. Meanwhile, in 1963, Aeronautics India Limited was incorporated as a company owned by Government of India to undertake manufacturing of MiG-21 aircraft under license. Finally, in 1964, both Hindustan Aircraft Limited and Aeronautics India Limited were merged together to form Hindustan Aeronautics Limited to design, develop, manufacture, maintain and upgrade your aircrafts, helicopters, aero engines, avionics, accessories, aerospace structures and industrial marine gas turbines. Currently, Hindustan Aeronautics is manufacturing light combat aircraft Tejas, Dhruv which is an advanced light helicopter, light combat helicopters and light utility helicopters, along with associated engines, avionics and accessories. Additionally, it also manufactures aircraft under license including Sukhoi, Su-30, MKI aircraft, Hawk Advanced Jet Trainer, Chetak and Cheetal helicopters. Company's immediate future projects include HTT-40 Basic Trainer, Utility Helicopter Maritime, higher version of light combat aircraft and combat air teaming system. In addition, HL provides support for maintenance, repair and overhaul for these indigenous and licensed manufactured aircraft and helicopters as well as for aircraft and helicopters procured directly by the Indian Defence Services along with the associated engines, accessories and avionics. Overall, we can break the revenue of the company in two major segments, manufacturing and MRO that is maintenance, repair and overhaul. If you look at FI22 revenue breakup, 64% of revenue is from MRO activity in Russia and Western origin aircraft and remaining 36% is from manufacturing segment. Hindustan Aeronautics has 20 production and 10 R&D centers co-located with the production division at 9 geographic locations across the country. These divisions are organized into 5 complexes namely Bangalore Complex, MIG Complex, Helicopter Complex, Accessories Complex and Design Complex. Apart from this, HEL has recently started a new facility spread over 615 acres at Tumkuru, Karnataka to manufacture helicopters. Hindustan Aeronautics has established its credibility through supply of high precision structural and composite work packages, assemblies, avionics, etc. to global aviation majors like your Airbus, Boeing, Rolls-Royce, IAI, etc. If you look at the leadership, Sri R. Madhavan is the chairman and MD of Hindustan Aeronautics. He holds postgraduate degree of MTech from IIT Madras. He joined HUL as a management trainee in July 1982 and has been associated with the company for around 40 years. Hindustan Aeronautics has got four CEOs for its four complexes. Mr. Sajal Prakash is the CEO of Accessories Complex and he is an MTech from IIT Madras and joined Hindustan Aeronautics in 1986. 
So a total experience of over 35 years. Then Mr. Amitabh Bhatt is the CEO of Bangalore Complex. He has total experience of 34 years. Then Mr. Anbu Villanas is the CEO of Helicopter Complex. He also holds MTech from IIT Madras and joined HL in 1986. Again, has over 35 years of experience. Then Mr. Dibyendu Methi is the CEO of MIC Complex. Again, MTech from IIT Madras and has an experience of 36 years with HL. In fact, the entire leadership of company is highly experienced and competent with decades of experience. Now, as far as promoters are concerned, Hindustan Aeronautics promoter is Indian government. So you get the sovereign trust with Hindustan Aeronautics. So both leadership and promoter pedigree of the company is top notch. Historically, India has been one of the largest importer of defense equipment in the world. So there was a huge dependency on foreign countries to supply the aircrafts, helicopters, arm, ammunition, etc. However, now Indian government is focusing on producing indigenous defense equipment for achieving self-reliance and reducing imports. And that is basically the biggest growth driver for Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. So Indian government has taken two major steps. First, it has increased the defense capital budget. Year on year, there's an increase in the budget for defense sector. You can see the image on the screen how Indian government has increased the budget on year on year. This increase in budget is to focus on modernization of defense equipment. And second and the biggest growth driver is focus of indigenization of defense equipment manufacturing. In the latest budget, Indian government has allocated 84,598 crore rupees of its 68% of the military capital acquisition budget is for purchasing locally produced weapons and systems to boost rail lines in the defense sector. The government has notified three lists of total 310 defense items in last two years, which will be procured locally in the next three to five years. These include major equipment and platforms like your combat aircrafts, submarines, armored vehicles, lightweight tanks, helicopters, missiles, radars, sensors, simulators, torpedoes, unmanned aerial vehicle, etc. Out of these 310 items, 90 plan to be indigenized by December 2022 itself. Moreover, the Defense Ministry also has notified two lists of 458 items in last six months for indigenization manufacturing that include subsystems, assemblies, components, etc. The impact of government focus on reducing import is clearly visible in Hindustan Aeronautics order book that currently stood at around 85,000 crore rupees. Out of this, 75% order book is for manufacturing. Just to give you an idea, in last 12 months, Hindustan Aeronautics total revenue was 26,600 crore. So the current order book is almost 3.2 times its revenue, which is fantastic. This kind of order book clearly says everything about the bright future growth prospect for the company. Then there's a strong pipeline of 1.24 lakh crore rupees worth of orders in manufacturing for the next three to four years, led by light utility helicopter, light combat helicopter, and engines for Su-30 and MiG-29. Not only there's strong demand for domestic Indian market, there's also a growing interest in foreign countries for Indian aircrafts, especially from the South Asian countries. For example, a tender for supply of 18 stages to Malaysia is under advanced stages of finalization by Malaysian government. Hindustan Aeronautics is also about to open an office in Malaysia as well as in geographies like Egypt, Middle East, North America. Indian government has set a target to achieve a business of 35,000 crore rupees from export of defense equipment by FI-25 and Hindustan Aeronautics is expecting an export of around 2,500 crore by FI-25. Not only is Hindustan Aeronautics working on defense sector and export, it is also planning to diversify its business into civil aviation market for both manufacturing and MRO opportunities. It is spending nearly 6 to 7 percent of its revenue in R&D to develop in-house defense equipment. It has a surplus cash balance of 14,000 crore, which is basically its working capital being funded upfront by its customer. Also remember that it is not a cakewalk to build these aircrafts, helicopters and other defense equipments. It requires years of knowledge and experience. That creates a big entry barrier for competitors in the defense sector. Hence, with all these positive development happening, I believe that sky is the limit for Hindustan Aeronautics. And there is still a long way to fly high in the sky. Now, if you look at the key risk, first risk is dependence on Indian government. Majority of its business come from Indian Defense Ministry. So there is a lot of dependence on Indian government. Although Hindustan Aeronautics would continue to receive business from Indian government, 
but it still creates a client concentration risk. In order to mitigate this risk, Hindustan Aeronautics is diversifying into civil MRO, passenger to flight conversion of aircraft, simulator, etc. and also expanding to foreign export market. Then second risk is dependency on foreign OEMs for critical component. Hindustan Aeronautics has a dependency on foreign OEMs for supply of critical components and spare parts required for the manufacturing and overhaul of aircrafts and helicopters. Any supply chain disruption can impact the business of the company. Now, as far as competitors are concerned, there are no direct competitor to Hindustan Aeronautics in India as it is the only aircraft manufacturer in India. Although you can compare it with Bharat Electronics Limited, that is also an Indian state-owned aerospace and defense company specialized in electronic equipment requirement for the Indian defense services. Now, if you look at the valuation of Bharat Electronics, it is trading at a P ratio of 29, whereas Hindustan Aeronautics is trading at a P ratio of 14. Clearly, Hindustan Aeronautics is trading at much below valuation than its peer Bharat Electronics. Now, I don't see any reason why Hindustan Aeronautics should trade at such below valuation to Bharat Electronics. Hence, I expect re-rating in Hindustan Aeronautics valuation and the gap between Hindustan Aeronautics and Bharat Electronics should narrow down. Now, let us look at the financials of Hindustan Aeronautics. Now, if you look at the revenues of Hindustan Aeronautics, it has jumped from 17,950 crore in March 17 to 26,627 crore in trailing 12 months. Look at this consistent increase in the revenues year on year. Although the revenue growth has been on the lower side. So this company is growing consistently in terms of revenue, but the growth has been on the lower side. And if you look at the profitability of the company, it was 3,240 crore and again increased consistently over the last 4-5 years. From 3,240 crore, company profitability has jumped to 5,772 crore. So the profit growth has been much higher. Next, if you look at the operating margin, if you look at it, it was on 18-19% in 17-18, but since then it is consistently having a very high margins of in the range of 23%. So in terms of margin, company is doing very well. Look at the ROE and ROCE, both its ROE and ROCE are well above 20%. You can see year on year, both ROE and ROCE are doing pretty good. The recent ROE and ROCE are in the range of 27%. That shows company has got a very high profitability. Next, if you look at the debt to equity, it had a debt of 0.45. But then if you look at in last couple of years, it has got literally zero debt. Next, if you look at the reserves of the company, it has grown from 9,151 crore to levels of 18,930 crore. So reserves growth has been fantastic. Next, if you look at the shareholding pattern of the company, its promoter, which is the Indian government, has got a very high shareholding. It was 89.97% till June, but since September 20, it is 75.15%. So it is on much higher side. Next, if you look at the DR shareholding, it actually got increased from 8.69% to 19.45%. So when promoters diluted their shareholding, DI has actually added it. And since then, it increased to 20.54. But in last few quarters, there's a slight dip, although you should ignore this because it is showing LIC in uh, public, but actually it should come over here. So if you look at in last few quarters, the DIS holding has slightly reduced. And the reason being that your FIS are consistently adding stake in Hindustan Aeronautics over the last six quarters. That shows that FIS are also confident on HL growth prospect. Now let us look at the share price movement of the company. So Hindustan Aeronautics is currently trading at levels of 2400 and if you look at last one year of performance, company has generated a return of 76%. So it has been a consistent increase in the share price since the government announcement of promoting the indigenous local companies. Now even after increase in the share price of the company, it is currently trading at a P ratio of just 14.72. Clearly, the financials of the company are looking rock solid with amazing earning growth, very high profitability and literally zero debt levels. At current levels of 2400, HL has a market cap of around 84,000 crore rupees and trading at a P ratio of 14.8. Now that is looking very, very attractive, especially due to the amazing growth prospect for the company. We have already discussed the current order book, which is 3.2 times its last 12 months of sales. I strongly believe that it is just the beginning of defense manufacturing in India. As far as future potential is concerned, only sky is the limit. Remember, HL is not only working for Indian defense sector, but now also looking to expand its operation in multiple countries for export. And it is also planning to diversify into civil aviation sector. 
And defense is one sector that requires highly specialized skill set that creates huge entry barrier for competitors. Also the fact that defense technologies like aircraft manufacturing is highly confidential. Overall, in spite of a good jump in its share price, I believe that it is still the beginning for HAL and only sky is the limit. So HAL can be a consistent compounder for next many years and its stock price should continue to fly as the future business would grow. Now tell me in the comment, what is your take on HAL and which company would you like me to cover next? If you find this video useful, do like and share it. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care.